Hello and welcome to today's book reading session of Preparing for the Day After. Preparing for the Day After is a photojournalistic treatise on disaster mitigation published by me, Malini Shankar and Walter Keller for the 10th anniversary of the tsunami, of the Asian tsunami. Tonight we will study the impact of the Chicxulub asteroid hit which hit uh, Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico and it is perhaps one of the most significant geological events in the planet Earth's history. Again, I need to clarify that the Chicxulub crater is not profiled in detail in our book. Let us first recap what we have learned in the previous book reading session before starting tonight's session. Water and sanitation is essential and central to developmental discourse. Livelihoods based on agrometeorological conditions are the best means of ensuring livelihood security. Culture sensitive food security also has evolved out of local agrometeorological conditions prevalent in an area. Climate change adaptation, menstrual hygiene, especially for indigenous people, solid waste management, universal health care access, sustainable development goals, they are all part of uh, the development agenda. Media personnel have to be trained in reporting disaster preparedness or the lack of it in the, at a district level. Now we come to the Chicxulub crater uh, and the asteroid hit. The Chicxulub asteroid hit is referred to as a geological event in planet Earth's history. This Chicxulub event refers to an asteroid that hit the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Debris from the explosion was thrown into the atmosphere, severely altering the climate and leading to the extinction of roughly three-fourths of uh, plant and animal species that existed at the time on planet Earth. It included the dinosaurs. I'm sorry, I can't, pardon me, but my cat is sitting on my lap today. I really can't help. Many asteroids of this type are, are now known. Their orbits pass through the inner solar system and crisscross the Earth's orbit. Some of these could potentially hit the Earth in the future. Most but not all are smaller than the one that hit us 2065 million years ago. The asteroid, it is estimated, was of the size uh, anything of anything between 11 into 81 kilometers in diameter. It weighed approximately 6.82 into 10 to the power of 15 joules, I think. Or tons. Confirmed research reports suggest the diameter of 150 kilometers of the asteroid. Going by the scientific estimate of the de depth, height and breadth of the asteroid at 1.3 into 10 to the power of 24 and 5.8 into 10 to the power of 25 into 6.82 into 10 to the power of 15 or 1.3258 yota joules, it weighed about 1 million tons in weight. The asteroid or comet created an impact the likes of which have few parallels. The asteroid or comet released energy to the tune of 1.3258 yota joules or about 100 million times the energy released by the Hiroshima-sized atom bomb which was in itself about 50 million tons of TNT. Imagine a bomb 100 million times that of the Hiroshima bomb. The ejector or the impact debris was found as far away as Hispaniola in height. Vaporized plumes of iridescence emitted glows spanning the entire hemisphere. This glow backed the sun rays along with the volcanic ash plumes circumventing the planet. That led to a volcanic winter followed by climate change. Vaporized plumes of iridescence emitted glows spanning the entire hemisphere. This glow blacked out the sun rays along with the volcanic ash plumes circumventing the planet. That led to a volcanic winter followed by climate change. Perhaps the most spectacular geological calamity ever to hit planet Earth, the calamity shocked minerals in the soil and introduced rare earth minerals and elements like iridium, which is found to occur very scantily on the planet Earth naturally. Subterranean rocks were cinched straight away. The impact of the asteroid melt, melted rock and substrata creating something called spherules, melting quartz, leaving the site filled with unusually large amount of shocked quartz. Prospectors Alan Hildebrand and David Kring measured a deposit of debris that was around 0.5 meters thick. According to the Lunar and Planetary Institute's website embedded here and found in the description box below this video. The impact of this asteroid or comet hitting the coastal area of Chicxulub in the Yucatan Peninsula was so ferocious that it triggered mega tsunamis of the height of 100 meters in the shallow waters of the Gulf of Mexico. And scientists estimate that in the deep ocean, the height of the mega tsunami would have been over 1.5 kilometers in height according to simulations done by scientists. In the deep ocean, scientists ever 
the mega tsunami would have been in the range of 4.6 kilometers in height at that density it is likely to have touched all the coasts in the world and triggered local tsunamis around the whole world that was because earthquakes of magnitude 12 which is today considered super earthquakes were triggered at the impact site at the yucatan peninsula additionally many earthquakes of magnitude 9 are thought to have occurred around the planet earth the asteroid co or comet hit presumably triggered ripples triggering mega tsunamis around the whole world Scientists and curious students of geology wonder if this asteroid hit has anything to do with the fact that the Atlantic Ocean rarely witnesses a mega tsunamis. I will now quote from the website of the Lunar and Planetary Institute's website. Again, quote: One of the important products of an impact cratering event is impact melt. A fraction of that melt is ejected from the crater. When the melt is ejected from a crater, it separates into molten droplets that quench to glass in the atmosphere before landing. Those glassy beads can form a layer of ejecta or debris both on land or on a sea floor. An unusually thick half meter deposit of impact melt spherules was discovered at the KT boundary on Haiti. That was important information because it indicated the source crater was in the region. The composition of the impact melt spherules was also important because it indicated the impact occurred in an area with continental crust. The spherules shown were collected from that deposit in Haiti. They are about 1 mm in size. The largest particle in the image has a length of about 4 mm, but spherules of up to 10 mm were observed. The spherules shown were here were described by that is the authors refer to the article the link of which is there in the description box below. The spherules shown here were described by David A Kring and William Boynton. 1991 altered spherules or impact melt and associated relic glass from the KT boundary sediments in Haiti uh, is the name of the article published in Geochemica at et Cosmochemica Acta 55 1737 to 1742 the composition of the relic glass was subsequently linked directly to the Chicxulub crater demonstrating that the Chicxulub impact occurred precisely at the KT boundary uh, that is the Kring and Boynton nature Uh, and this quoted from Kring and Boynton in Nature 358 141 to 144 1992 that's the citation the crater created by the asteroid impact guzzled a lot of ocean water revealing the asteroid entry into the earth's orbit at a furious pace the asteroid or comet created an iridescence creating enormous friction in the atmosphere volcanoes were triggered around the whole world such was the debilitating impact of the asteroid or comet touching the terrain on dry land and sea floor violent winds were triggered by the entry of the asteroid or comet the volcanoes across the length and breadth of the various continents triggered massive wildfires leading to the mass destruction of wildlife sulfur aerosols by volcanoes around the whole world triggered volcanic winter and ushered in climate change because of a super abundance of carbon dioxide and carbon oxides monoxides etc this chicxulub event is thought to have ex extinguished all terrestrial dinosaurs avian dinosaurs survived so did frogs another reptile however one is not yet sure if avian dinosaurs evolved into modern day birds or avian fauna It was one ice age that accounted for the extinction of the woolly mammoth too. When did this happen? The Chicxulub asteroid hit or comet hit is estimated by scientists and researchers to have occurred around 66 million years ago. The Chicxulub asteroid or comet hit ended the Cretaceous period in Earth's history. The Cenozoic or Paleogenic era dawned the day after the Chicxulub asteroid hit planet Earth. The very significant this very significant geological event in planet Earth's history was accidentally discovered by Glenn Penfield and Antonio Camargo when they were prospecting for fossil fuel in the Yucatan Peninsula on behalf of Pemex, which stands for Petróleos Mexicanos. How did it happen? According to the article HEKT boundary impact on the Planetary Institute website, the link of which has been put up in the description box below this video, in the late 1970s, a team of geochemists headed by Luis Alvarez and his son Walter Alvarez, both with connections to the University of California at Berkeley, 
were studying chemical changes in soil layers corresponding to breaks in the fossil record. In the soil layer that uh, separates the Mesozoic era from the Cenozoic era, uh, dating 65 million years ago, they found an excess of the element iridium, which is common in meteorites. Meteorites are believed to be fragments of asteroids. Therefore, the Alvarez team theorized that an asteroid had hit Earth at this time and that the debris ejected from the explosion was spread in the soil layer. Unquote. Evidence Evidence for the impact event is sourced from the Planetary Institute website, which is one of the most credible sources for research for scientists. There are now many lines of evidence to prove that a relatively large impact happened 65 million years ago. The iridium excess in the 65 million year old layer has been confirmed at many points around the whole world. The same soil layer contains grains of quartz that were confirmed, that were deformed, I beg your pardon, by high shock pressures as would occur in a giant explosion. The deformation is a microscopic structure called twinning in the crystals. The same soil layer contains enough soot to correspond to burning down all of the forests of the world. This suggests that massive fires were touched off at the time of impact. The same soil layer, especially around the Gulf of Mexico, contains massive deposits of tumbled boulders as would be generated in a large tsunami or tidal wave. The geographic distribution of tsunami deposits suggests the impact was in the Caribbean area. After a decade of searching, scientists in 1990 identified the crater associated with this material. It is no longer visible on the surface of the earth, but it is buried under sediments. It straddles the coast of Yucatan. It is revealed by mapping the strength of the gravity field over that area and by drilling. It has been dated as 65 million years old. Astronomers have charted numerous asteroids that cross the Earth's orbit. From studies of orbit statistics, it is estimated that asteroids of 10 kilometers in size can hit the Earth roughly every 100 million years or so, which fits with the idea that we actually did get hit 65 million years ago by an object of this size. Smaller hits are much more common. Where did this happen? The asteroid hit the Gulf of Mexico coast of the, of the Yucatan Peninsula near the village of Chicxulub creating a crater with a diameter of around 11 into 80 kilometers. The debris was found in Haiti, in Hispaniola, in the Haiti island in 1978. The debris or ejecta contained traces of iridium. It led scientists and geologists to investigate the source of iridium, which is not so common on planet Earth. But iridium is apparently very common in asteroids and other orbital space material like comets. Petrologists and geologists then discovered the Chicxulub crater whose date coincided with carbon dating techniques of the trace material which was found in Hispaniola and these twin discoveries led to intense research and then it emerged that it was the asteroid hit that created an enormous crater bordering the Gulf coast of Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Who were responsible for this? According to a Wikipedia article, the link of which is again put up in the description box below, in 1978, geophysicists Glenn Penfield and Antonio Camargo were working for the Mexican state-owned oil company Petróleos Mexicanos or Pemex as part of an airborne magnetic survey of the Gulf of Mexico north of the Yucatan Peninsula. Penfield's job was to use geophysical data to scout possible locations for oil drilling. In the offshore magnetic data, Penfield noted anomalies whose depth he estimated and mapped. He then obtained onshore gravity data from the 1940s. According to Penfield, the old data showed a large concentric set of onshore gravity anomalies. When I laid it next to my number two pencil mapping of the offshore, offshore magnetic anomalies, the fit was perfect. A shallow 180 kilometer diameter gravity magnetic bull's eye on the almost non-magnetic uniform carbonate background of the Yucatan platform. We recognize the crater as a likely Cretaceous Paleogene boundary event, say author Penfield Glenn et al. in an article called Unlikely Impact in the AAPG Explorer and was retrieved for the Wikipedia article on the 12th of December 2019. A decade earlier, the same map suggested an impact feature to contractor Robert Beltosser 
but he was forbidden to publicize his conclusion by pemex corporate policy of the time a history.com article why did the dinosaurs die out says in 1956 russian astronomer joseph sklovsky became the first scientist to consider the extinction was due to a large catastrophic event when he theorized that a supernova that is an explosion of a dying star showered the earth in radiation that could have killed the dinosaurs once again the problem with the theory was explaining why dinosaurs died out and other species did not wherefore the disappearance of dinosaurs it was one of the biggest consequences of the asteroid hit so what was the result of the outcome of the asteroid hit climate change destruction of three-fourths of plant and animal life for sure an article in an article on history.com the editors of history.com say quote the cretaceous tertiary extinction event or the kt event is the name given to the die off of the dinosaurs and other species that took place some 65.5 million years ago for many years paleontologists believe this event was caused by climate and geological changes that interrupted the dinosaurs food supply However, in the 1980s, father and son scientists Luis and Walter Alvarez discovered in the geological record a distinct layer of iridium, an element found in abundance only in space that corresponds to the precise time the dinosaurs died. This suggests that a comet, asteroid or meteor impact event may have caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. In the 1990s, a scientist located the massive Chicxulub crater at the tip of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, which dates to the period in question. Dinosaurs roamed the Earth for over 160 million years until their sudden demise, some 65.5 million years ago, in an event now known as the Cretaceous Tertiary or the KT extinction event. K is the abbreviation for Cretaceous and corresponds to the German word Kreidezeit. Uh, besides dinosaurs, many other species of mammals, amphibians and plants died out at the same time. Over the years, paleontologists have proposed se several theories for this extensive die-off. One early theory was that small mammals ate dinosaur eggs, thereby making the dinosaur's population unsustainable over a period of time. Another theory was that the dinosaur's bodies became too big to be operated by their small brains. Some scientists believed a great plague decimated the dinosaur population and then spread to the animals that feasted on their carcasses. Starvation was another possibility. Large dinosaurs required vast amounts of food and could have stripped bare all the vegetation in their habitat. But many of these theories are easily dismissed. If dinosaurs' brains were too small to be adaptive, then uh, they would not have flourished for 160 million years. Also, plants do not have brains, nor do they suffer from the same diseases as animals. So, their simultaneous extinction makes these theories less plausible. For many years, climate change was the most credible explanation for the dinosaur's demise. But in the late Mesozoic era that corresponds with the extinction of the dinosaurs, evidence shows that the planet slowly became cooler. Lower temperatures caused ice to form over the North and South Poles and the oceans to become cooler. Because the dinosaurs were cold-blooded, meaning they obtained body heat from the sun and the air, they would not have been able to survive in significantly colder climes. Yet, some species of cold-blooded animals such as crocodiles did manage to survive. Also, climate change would have taken tens of thousands of years, giving the dinosaurs sufficient time to adapt. It came from outer space. In 1956, the Russian astronomer Joseph Sklovsky became the first scientist to consider the extinction was due to a single catastrophic event when he theorized that a supernova or the explosion of a dying star showered the earth in radiation that could have killed the dinosaurs. Once again, the problem with the theory was explaining why dinosaurs died out and other species did not. Also, scientists said that such an event would have left evidence on the surface of the earth trace amounts of radiation dating back to the Cretaceous period. None was found. Enter Louis Alvarez, a Nobel Prize winning physicist, inventor and pioneer in the field of radiation and nuclear research. He and his son, noted geologist Walter Alvarez, were conducting research in Italy when they discovered a centimeter thick layer of iridium enriched clay at the KT boundary. Iridium is rare on Earth but more common in space. The Alvarezes published their findings in 1981, postulating that the thin layer of iridium was deposited following the impact of a large meteor, comet or asteroid with the Earth. 
Furthermore, this bolide impact, meaning the meteor comet or asteroid colliding with the Earth's surface, could have caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. At the time, Alvarez's theory was so far removed from prevailing hypotheses that it was ridiculed. Slowly though, other scientists began finding iridium evidence at various places around the globe that co corroborated the Alvarez theory. There was, however, no smoking gun in the form of an impact site. Then in 1991, a massive meteor crater 110 miles in diameter was discovered on the edge of the Yucatan Peninsula, extending into the Gulf of Mexico. The Chicxulub crater, as it was dubbed, was named after a nearby village. Scientists believe the bolide that formed it was roughly 6 miles in diameter, struck the earth at 40,000 miles per hour and released 2 million times more energy than the most powerful nuclear bomb ever detonated. The heat would have broiled the earth's surface, ign ignited worldwide fires and plunged the planet into darkness as the debris clouded the atmosphere. Miles high tsunamis would have washed over the continents, drowning many forms of life. Shock waves would have triggered earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The resulting darkness would have, could have lasted for months, possibly years. It would have plunged the earth's temperatures into the freezing zone, killing plants and leaving herbivores with nothing to eat. Many dinosaurs would have died within weeks. The carnivores who feasted on the herbivores would have died a month or two later. Overall, the loss of biodiversity would have been tremendous. Only small scavenging mammals could have, that could burrow into the ground and eat whatever remained would have survived. The iridium layer plus the Chicxulub crater were evidence enough to convince many scientists that the bolide impact theory was credible. It explained much of what previous theories could not. Still a theory. Paleontology remains a competitive discipline even though its central mystery appears to have been solved. Agreement over dinosaur extinction is far from unanimous and fossils continue to be found that add to the body of knowledge about how dinosaurs lived and died. Only recently have birds been identified as descendants of the dinosaurs and theories regarding dinosaur intelligence and behavior continue to change. Even long established truths such as dinosaurs cold bloodedness are open for debate. The climate Climate change theory still holds sway over some scientists who refute that the Chicxulub impact was the sole cause of the extinction. Evidence from the 65 million year old lava flows in India, uh, which might have initiated global climate change and threatened the dinosaur's existence. Let me read that again. The climate change theory still holds sway over some scientists who refute that the Chicxulub impact was the sole cause of the extinction. Evidence from the 65 million year old lava flows in India, which must be the Deccan traps, point to a giant gaseous volcanic plume which might have initiated global climate change and threatened the dinosaur's existence. Scientists' continued research will help paint a more detailed picture of the ever-changing, ever-evolving planet. The KT extinction was not the first such massive die-off in history nor was it the largest. The Permian-Triassic extinction event known as the Great Dying occurred 251.4 million years ago and eradicated 96% of all the marine species and 70% of all the terrestrial vertebrate species on Earth. But the planet recovered naturally and is home to the greatest bio and zoodiversity offered by Mother Nature. Catastrophes have recurred. Lake Toba, Supervolcanic explosion rendered many wildlife in South Asia extinct, as the Jwalapuram caves have shown. Many other geological processes later, there have been re realignment of tectonic plates, giving rise to mountain chains, river systems, and geomorphological adaptation of ecosystems. The Pamir North was born consequent to the clash of the Indian subcontinent against the Eurasian landmass. This gave rise to many mountain chains, including Himalayas, K2, Hindu Kush, Altoon Mountains, Kunlun Mountains, Tien Shan Mountains, Tibetan Plateau, Chain Anamatik Mountains, Elbots Mountains, Caucasus, Thaklimankan Mountains, Zagros Mountains, Ural Mountains, and others. Rivers like the Ganges, the Mekong, the Yellow River, the Irrawaddy, the Hongho, the Brahmaputra, Yamuna, and the Indus River systems also sprang out following the clash of the Indian subcontinent against the Eurasian landmass. 
the ecosystems that evolved from this geological event support the, to this day the native wildlife so that's it for tonight i hope you have found today's episode on chiksu loop interesting uh, no amount of disaster preparedness will help in being prepared for a geological calamity of the scale of chiksu loop no matter how smart the regime is so developmental discourse on water and sanitation climate friendly architecture or pandemic smart public governance these will all be futile in front of a geological calamity of the scale of chiksu loop the chiksu loop geological catastrophe was of unimaginable scale In the next week's video we will learn about search and rescue the chapter will focus on search and rescue at sea and in the aftermath of natural calamities like cyclones flash floods earthquakes the asian tsunami and so on please do share tonight's video in your circles and do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and click on the bell icon don't forget to log in for the live interaction on saturday 5th of june 2021 at 7:30 pm indian time i hope it will be interesting interaction i'm looking forward to the live chat and interaction in case you have not yet subscribed to our youtube channel please do so now without any further delay i will be grateful if you can give a thumbs up to our videos take care keep smiling stay home stay safe and ciao